What up, nerds? Welcome back to the Nerd Dimension podcast, the Loki series finale. We're going to break it down. Here with me, David and Mikey. What's happening, boys? We're going to break down the episode and get right into it. Not the best episode of the series, but let's get straight to it. Mikey, what did you think, mate? Well, I'm back. Took a wee week off, but I'm back. First thoughts is controversial. I thought it's been the worst episode so far. Like I was saying to David before you come on camera, I had to watch it three times because I fell asleep too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, on a lighter note, from last episode, my rating for last episode was a solid five. So it was. It was a beautiful episode, well put together. I liked what you said about it being, it being like a scene for The Last of Us too. Uh, I got that vibe as well. It was a good, that was a good shout. But on a darker note, bad episode. And I'm... Mm. I'm looking forward to dwelling in and telling you what I thought was so wrong about it. David boy. First thoughts, let's go. Well, you know what? I got what I was hoping for. And, you know, oh, he got some. He got a wee kiss, didn't he? That's what I was hoping for, you know? A bit, a bit <laughs> weird. Oh, him kissing himself, but I like that. But overall, Marvel, you let us down, man. You let us down. <laughs> Honestly, the episode wasn't perfect. The pacing was slow during the whole dialogue reveal of, let's just say, Kang. It wasn't revealed as Kang, but he says, Some have called me many things. The one who remains, the Conqueror. Wait, 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 Marvel fan. Kang the motherfucking Conqueror. And now that the timeline's changed and everything's went kablooey, we saw where Loki ended up. Mobius doesn't even remember who he is. And... Here we go. It's like Kang's the leader of the TVA. So where do we go from here? Multiple branch line te- time realities are existent now, which explains leading into multiverse of madness. What is your thoughts about this, boys? I'm blown away by that alone. I know the whole dialogue scene, Loki and Sylvie in a chair talking to Kang. He's a bit goofy, whatever. It dragged a little. I'll agree. The pacing wasn't the best. However, Thought it was a good episode. I didn't answer every question, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it overall. It wasn't my highest rated episode, but I want to hear your thoughts. Let's d- deep dive into the scenes and break it down. After you, Mikey. All right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it started off. It started off. I like the start of it. Don't get me wrong. See the way it, 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 it took an actual chunk of, you know, real life. You know, you had your um, Nelson Mandela speech, um, you know, Maya Angelou, you know, it took a lot of that and, and put it into it for them to walk through the, the void, basically, into um, the world, whatever, where he was. You could tell I was not interested in this episode. I'm sorry, boys. Um, yeah, it started off very slow, and I don't think it picked up. And weirdly enough, the only scenes that I did like were the only scenes that didn't involve the Kang and Loki and Sylvie because I think like Paul said it dragged the arse right out of it however though when um, they go in the, the mansion <laughs> I shat myself when Miss Minutes appeared <laughs> 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 I, I was taking a drink I went <laughs> 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 who shat themselves when Miss Minute appears my partner because I was like I fucking knew it I told David I told Mike I fucking knew it it won it too. Miss Minutes was a bad guy. I called it. <laughs> David, thoughts? Lay it out. 
I mean, I, 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 I did enjoy like kind of the beginning of it. I liked um, the kind of TVA getting um, like torn apart. You know, what was that um, agent called? Was it Agent B? B fifth Hunter B fifteen. Hunter B fifteen, and uh, she made the TVA follower, and then revealed uh, Rav- Ravona. What was it Ravona being a, a school teacher? Uh, um, I thought that was quite cool, you know. Um, and I don't know Mobius. I thought that we'd get a wee bit more action off of him um, when he kind of revealed himself to be back to Ravona. Um, a bit of a pushover. Uh, I thought something had happened there. Not really. Ravona walked away into the portal. And genuinely overall, I think, yeah, I mean, it was quite interesting. You know, like I didn't know what to expect and when that door was going to open. I didn't expect the guy to come out. I thought it had been Kang. I thought it had been a guy in a proper outfit, like someone to be terrifying. But it scared Loki, and Loki knows that something bad's going to happen. So what is going to happen? I'm a wee bit let down with that last episode. But you know, the way it was with Loki, will it be better? Damn right. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not let down at all. There was that bit when they were talking that dragged, but they had a lot to answer, a lot to explain, and that was just, to me, set up for the future of the MCU. It was. Well, that, that's exactly what it was. It did it set up because um, the whole part, the whole point in, you know, the next phase is about the multiverse war and this is exactly what Loki and Sylvia started so it has set up this whole new you know phase and it's telling us where we're going next but it ended in the way that I think most people not Paul but I think most people just like oh, like Paul, you you know you'd be happy if Selby came on and took a dump in the screen you know what I mean like, no, <laughs> no I wouldn't listen other episodes of the series much superior to this episode. Honestly, like there was great episodes throughout this. However, as I said last week to David, there's so much left unanswered. There's only one episode left. And for what they had and what they did, I thought it worked. I enjoyed it. What I see from this whole you know, the sacred timelines broke off, the multiverse exists, and now Kang's a main player. That gives me Fantastic Four vibes. That gives me X-Men vibes. That's giving me ways that they can integrate all these franchises into the MCU without it making complicated or having a... What's the word? I can't remember. The word was continuity. You dumb drunk bastard! Having it have effect any of what's came in the past. Like, oh, where was the X-Men? during an endgame, where was the X-Men during Infinity War? I think they've done it perfectly. I thought it was a good episode. It did drag while they were talking, however. I did like the performances, the whole betrayal between Loki. We've seen Loki in that moment. He's evolved. I was expecting in this show a Loki that was like President Loki, mischievous. The end of Avengers, original Avengers movie, Loki. That's the Loki I was expecting in this show. And he's had a character development. As I said in the first step, he can go either way. They can do what they want with him because he's a variant. And they've made him a likable character, a protagonist of this show. I thought they'd done it well. Not my favourite episode, but I'm not disappointed. I really enjoyed the full series overall. I'm quite shocked that everything that happened, you know, the, the kind of end, you know, like the whole disaster, wasn't actually caused by Loki for a change. <laughs> I thought it would have been. You know, I was kind of thinking, uh, is he the one that's going to put the sword or the dagger through that guy? But no, Sylvie done it, you know, and he, he tried to stop her because he knows everything he has been done, everything that he has done has caused disaster. You know, he's not the god of mischief. He's just the this horrible guy that Mobius tried to portray to him. You know what I mean? He was the mischievous part of that. And Moby, um, Loki has uh, have definitely evolved from it. He knows that this is going to be bad if uh, we kill him. You know, he should take option A rather than option B. Sylvie, too much hating her. You know, one that can't trust and one that um, couldn't be trusted. Is that right? Yeah. You, know what at? <laughs> you can't trust anybody. And I cannot be trusted. That's what you're talking about, what yeah. Loki said to Sylvie. Did yeah. you just think Sylvie was going to go through with it? Because I was like, mm, is she? Isn't she? 
and it was kind of brutal for an MCU thing. She was like up and stabbed him, but he was laughing. It was bizarre, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. It did drag at some points, but how how did she open the portal to kick Loki out? Aye. He put the temp pad on the table, and it was like a temptation for both of them. And he's like, don't. But she got a hold of it, sent Loki packing, and then he did what she wanted them to do. He wanted her to kill him. He knew it would happen. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty decent. It did I- drag some of the talking. It did. He was a bit goofy, but what were you going to say, Mikey? Oh, no, I was going to say, I actually thought... You know, see the the, the um, what is it they're calling them in the show? Is it the the un- unanswered one? Um, I the remaining was, one. The, uh, sorry, the remaining one. Yeah, you're right there. Uh, I actually thought it was the the guy. What's his name? Who introduces Stephen Strange to the ancient one? I thought it was him at first. I thought it was the same the same actor for a start, and then I thought it was the same character, but it's obviously not. But it would t- make sense because he did disappeared didn't he or did he die in Doctor Strange I can't remember no no in the post credit scenes of Doctor Strange you're talking about uh, his name starts with an M it's slipping it's on the tip of my tongue too many sorcerers then he kills the sorcerer that Stephen Strange visits who was in the Catwoman movie was the detective Uh, anyway that guy he's playing basketball how can you walk how can you play basketball blah 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 he tells them about the place where he goes and yeah there you go. So, watching the little the little clip, right, um, of how they met, you know, the 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 remaining one, right, how he had the technology to open up a portal to meet other variants, right? The one who remains. How? how? Like, how did he have that technology? I do not get it at all. How is he smart enough years and years ago, mm-hmm. for God knows when, uh, to be so intelligent to open up a portal to another dimension, I do not get it. Do you mean the other dimension? Do you, not, do you mean you go between the universes where they were trying to help each other? It. Obviously, he said that he got his power from that big dog thing. I can't remember the name of it, right? No, no, no. no. You're talking about. But a- how did he get? You're talking about Atheon or Atheist, one or the other. Uh, he said there was a scientist in the 30th century that was so smart that he found a way to travel between the multiverse. He noticed there was universes and galaxies stacked on top of each other. So he's so smart, he figured out a way to travel between them. And obviously, the version of him that was so smart in every one of these other universes f- figured out the same thing. So then they all traded information, technology, whatever, made each other better, but then it became all out war. And then He does explain it. He yeah, does, he does. His, he does. His variants are they all good. So they are his variants are actually bad and that is why he'd formed a TVA to stop his variants from basically doing what Loki and Sylvie I, do I get I get, anyway. I, I get the thought process behind it, right? But I just don't get how they develop something in that time of year, right, 13th century or whatever, to be able to open up a door to a different universe. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, there's the just so much... And, well, the 30th there, century... Anything like that. How far probably, away from now is the 30th century? We're in the, the 21st. Did ninth? you say the 13th or the 30th? So nine centuries from now. Oh, I thought you said 13th. I was wondering where no. you were getting it. Oh, no. right, I thought you said 13th. No, right, Kang, I'm like, okay, all right, never no mind. No, 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 Kang the Conqueror was a scientist from the 30th, 3-0, right. 30th right. century. Not 1-3, right, okay, okay. So, so, I would, like, I, how the hell would I have done it in the 13th century? <laughs> like, no how chance. Many, how many years in the future, do you know what I mean? And the, every version of him from the multiverse all figured this out, started trading information, knowledge with each other, but they yeah. ended up in all out war. They were all, a lot of them were bad. He was a kind one, but his whole, I thought his performance was really good. It was creepy. It was weird. It was bizarre, but it was that way where it wasn't just 
a full expositions dump on the like lazy writing expeditions dump on the people watching. It was done in a way I, I didn't think it was that bad. It did drag. I feel like it could have cut between them and other things going on and whatever. So many answers, questions unanswered, but Overall, I didn't think it was the worst episode. I didn't think it was the worst finale. Definitely not the strongest episode of the series, but when, there, when, there was the, when, they talking, when they were talking for so long, I'm watching and I'm like that. Surely we've got a double episode here. Surely, I and I, yeah. I clicked the wee button, and I'm like, ah, oh my god, ten minutes left, no chance. <laughs> I was, I, I, for me, man, right, and I, I know I said it earlier, right, but. So I was sitting watching it, so, you know, my daughter went to sleep. I thought, right, I can, so I watched it three times today because I kept falling asleep. So my daughter went to sleep the first time. I thought, right, we have peace to watch it, get straight in it. And this bit um, where they're sitting and talking, I thought it was like, I'm about half an hour into it. Like, like half an hour into this, just this scene. Now I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, I, I fall asleep and then I wake up. It's done. And I was like, oh, Christ, I don't even know where I fell asleep. So I rewatched the whole episode. I fell asleep again. Bang on them talking, and I was like, hey, "What is wrong with me?" Woke up, slapped myself, watched it, and I was then it finished. I, I finished it in the end, and I was just like, "Oh!" But you know what? There was a lot of stuff unanswered. It it mm-hmm. set up season two. It set up the multiverse. It set up phase four. But you know, for it being the ending of season one after being such a high from one to four, eh, one to five. Sorry, I just think it's a bit of disappointment. And, and it, like Falcon and Winter Soldier was complete opposite. Falcon and Winter Soldier was great, meh, great, wow, blah, blah, blah. And then it finished so good. And I thought, and I, for Loki, I think we were all in the same boat where for Loki, we're like, how how is this going to get any better? Resolved. How is it going to be resolved by the final episode? Was my yeah, and then, was my query. In the end, I just, I think the end just let me down personally. Um, but, you know, you never know, episode one of season two, we could, it could open up, Bobby's just sitting there on a jet ski, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what, I thought, I thought uh, the cliffhanger it left us on, how it, was ex- how it was explained, I'm curious to, where did Ravona go, where did Red Slayer go when she walked through that tent pack, a lot of questions unanswered as I said, However, I wasn't too disappointed. It wasn't as action packed and as MCU grand scale as other episodes in this season. Yeah. But I thought the whole season as a as a full, and if you think about it as a movie, just watch if you binge it from start to finish. I'm pretty satisfied with the series overall. I, a lot of a lot of moments in this episode I did really enjoy. I only watched it once. I would have liked to watch it again, but I've been so busy. I've been so busy, but. Overall, I wasn't too disappointed. It did drag like fuck when they were talking to, let's just say Kang. I mean, it alluded to it being Kang and how it set up. Yeah, definitely. How it how it set up the future of the MCU because see, the MCU is all it's going to be mostly cosmic based now, but this whole multiverse thing as well has a whole different section and has room to bring in the X-Men Fantastic Four and explain it in interesting ways that won't contradict or add continuity to the past MCU movies and whatnot. I think it's pretty genius. I was not disappointed. Overall, as a series, I was blown away. I loved it. I thought Loki was great. Not my highest rated episode, but I loved it overall. Snyder Cut. <laughs> Snyder Cut. Fix it, man. Fix it. <laughs> I know, I agree, but I think as a whole, the TV show was phenomenal. Like, it was another absolute, you know, piece of art. You know, it, Disney's worked magic on it, you know what I mean? Um, but in the end, you know, sometimes no evidence as it seems, and you do need to be disappointed to then start up and, you know, be amazed, you know what I mean? Like, Tell you what was missing, it was the grand scale action scene. It never had it. For yeah, a finale, yeah. there's usually like some big backstabbing twist or some grandiose scaled action scene. It never had that. It was too focused on setting things up. Maybe it should have been extended. The only really hardcore, high paced, fast action we had was Loki try to convince Sylvie and then fighting, which was very choreographed and 
not my favourite action scene. Better disappointment compared to like the end of episode three, was it, with the one shot and they're trying yeah. to get on off Lamentis. Like when you compare it to that, it's very underwhelming. Very underwhelming. But for what they had to do and what they did, I wasn't too disappointed. But this episode was missing a massive action, fast paced action. Tip, oh, like there's there's something like they're against the clock. There's there's risk. There's there's danger. Do you know what I mean? There's it never had that. It was all kind of exposition, explaining, and build up for the future. But I did enjoy the series. I was really hoping for like portals to start opening up and yeah. all the very start walking in. Even if they end it like that, that'd have been great, you know. But if you look at it from this point, right, we had one division, and that kind of scene was like kind of in that little cul-de-sac kind of area, you know, the little village, uh, and then they had the military base outside the dome, and that was pretty much the whole setting of the whole show. And then we had um, American um, soldier um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That that was different locations, right? And it was brilliant. The, well, the second last episode I thought was absolutely rubbish. And then it built up. It answered everything. The final one, it was action-packed. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Loki was just phenomenal throughout the whole thing. Like, see with the whole... Um, when they went to Pompeii and that volcano blew up, when they went to the future into that kind of um, little shopping centre kind of thing with the, the tornadoes and the big oceans and all that. And then the that scene that you're talking about, the one shot one with all the different um, explosions from the moon ready to crash on, it was absolutely phenomenal. The last episode did let me down a wee bit, but when you think about like how much... Um, choreograph they put into it, how much um, effects everything with the green screening and all that that they've done. It was phenomenal. The last episode, nah, but I, I do believe that Loki is going to get bigger and better. Yeah. I believe that. Visually, I thought it was stunning, you know what I mean? Like, it is the most stunning um, you know, cinematic thing I, I, I've seen, you know what I mean? From locations, it was for being such a small cast as well, you know what I mean. They smashed it. They for being for being very small casting, very like very little characters like to dialogue. You know what I mean. Unless it was a scene where you need more than the the main three. Um, I think the last episode missed a moment here. See in episode five when you got the uh, the older Loki, and he was he 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 done that power and he built the city. That was oh, a, a that that was a finale moment. I thought if that was an episode, that was so. I thought that was amazing. Like and then Loki and Sylvie's like, do you know we can do that? And then Sylvie says, "What is it?" She says, and she goes, "Or is it Loki?" That says, "We don't know our own power." Oh, I don't know. Like, I can't remember. It was a week ago. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a that was more a finale moment. Just that scene alone with him building up this city for a life or whatever the dog was called to to distract them, then the whole episode. But it's not going to take away the fact that one a five, you know, it was the best, you know, Marvel hands down. I think so. I think it was the best Marvel, you know, piece of cinema hands down. Maybe after the Endgame. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'd go too far and say it was better than everything else. There was things about it that I loved. Sets, different locations, mystery, uniqueness. It was its own thing. It really was. And uh, I don't know if any of you have saw Black Widow yet, but... No, not yet. I was disappointed. I, I didn't enjoy it that much. I didn't think it was nothing to be too hot about it. For me, I was expecting something on the level of Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Fucking far from it, personally. But this show, other movies in the past, such as Endgame, Infinity War, Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't think this is better than all that. But I love this for so many different reasons and for its own way. It's unique. It's creative. The different every episode had something different. Had something to give. New set places. New pe- new places to go different characters, it just, the story was a bit of a mystery. Our answers wasn't concluded, there was no closure, but the fact that we're getting a season two, there was a cliffhanger, 
overall, I really fucking enjoyed it. I really did. I really did. Yeah. David, you'll let your burst and say something. Let it out. Uh, going from what you were talking about there, Black Widow, right? Apparently that has set it up for a Hawkeye movie. Yeah, that's maybe. what I heard. Um, I heard that. And uh, part number two, the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I did get that feel, you know, when I watched that movie and volume two. You know, the way they've done Loki, where they're going into the different locations, I got a total a Guardians vibe, so I did from it. I loved it. That I vibrant loved... cosmic, that vibrant yeah. cosmic vibe, yeah. and it still, it remained with the same tone as Guardians of the Galaxy, because obviously it's the same universe, do you know what I mean? But I feel, mm. like, I feel like their whole style, their art direction with the cosmic side, I'm so buzzing to see it. Shang-Chi and uh, the Eternals look like it's based on Earth, but everything else is going to be cosmic. Captain mm-hmm. Marvel too, but see what you were saying about uh, what was it you said there? Oh, there was something I, I forgot now. Anyway, moving on. What were um, you saying, David? Aye, by the way, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, back to that one, right? Anyone getting the video game? Because I know I'm getting it. Oh, I can't. What? When's I it? Think it's brilliant. Is it for the Xbox? I don't know. I just want it. I want it now. But I had to look at the trailer. The trailer got revealed uh, a few weeks ago, and. Uh, I've been buzzing since, man. Even the the choice of music and all that, I can't wait. You know the 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 uh, what's his name? Uh, Star Lord doesn't look like uh, Chris Pratt, is it? Hi, it's the Hi. It's, it's the iterations from the comics that they're using. Ah, uh-huh. but I don't care. I love it. I think it looks so good. I can't wait. I can't wait. I know what. Just where you're on, but we're off that topic now. I can't wait for what if. But uh, what if? What if? Looks fantastic, man, and and. I don't know if it's right, but I read it somewhere. I think it was on Facebook and it was on the um, uh, it was this comic book spoiler thing page, and they said that it was the last thing Chadwick Boseman filmed before he, he died. Yeah. So it's actually Chadwick Boseman's um the oh, voiceover. It's, it's all the actors and actresses' voices. Mm-hmm. It's his last performance. I can't wait. Uh, I, I, me too. I'm looking forward. Oh, to back to Loki. Back to Loki. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but yeah, no, great. What do you think will happen in uh, season two? Then, what's your expectation? I looked at my missus and I was like, "What? That's it? It's done?" Because it kind of I felt like it was a cliffhanger. Now that I've digested it, but it was abrupt and. As, as we've already spoke about, there was no grand scale, like, action scene or whatever. The second act of this whole episode dragged, and the first yeah. act dragged into the second act, and it was... I did like seeing hey. Mobius and what he done, and I'm curious about Ravona and whatnot, but moving on. See, see when um, the uh, Loki went into that new, like, in a parallel universe, right? And Mobius didn't have a clue who he was. I got total Rick and Morty feeling like, have you seen that? When they go to one, they're trying to get back to their actual normal universe. You know what I mean? The they're trying to go all these series, clothes. The whole series is a rip-off of Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is. It I've really only seen bits of Rick and Morty, but I get the joke. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Rick and Morty is, you've got The Simpsons, You've got Family Guy just slightly above it. American Dad up here. Cleveland Show somewhere down here you can't see. South Park away up here. And then Rick and Morty's fucking... I love Rick and Morty. On a level of its own. I've just... I, I've been watching week to week the new season. One of my videos, by the way, if you go watch it, I've got a Rick and Morty t-shirt on using the new green screen for the first time. I'm at, there was green on the lettering that said Rick and Morty on my t-shirt. So that comes out with the green screen and whatever's going on behind me, you can see it's actually pretty cool the effect that I had. Go check it out on the channel. But I, Rick and Morty's great, Mikey. Give it a shout. I've seen bits, but just not enough to, to, to go ahead and talk to you about it. Binge, is binge anyone, it on Netflix? No, I mean, is binge, binge on Netflix. The Simpsons um, Avengers thing? On no. Disney Plus? On Disney Plus, The Simpsons have done a whole Avengers thing, where, like... like a whole lo- it's actually a whole Loki thing. Loki it looks amazing. The Simpsons. I've not I've watched, watched it, but my missus showed me the, the picture on Disney Plus of it. 
I've okay. not spoken about it at all, but I'm going to assume. I have no idea about this at all. That's me first just hearing about it. But I'm going to assume they've done a Hulk version of Homer. Is it the, it's Homer the Hulk? They have before, but it was like, I don't know, it was like you see Loki and it's all Simpson characters. It's on Disney Plus, you see it at the top. I've actually not looked into it, but. I know what you're talking hardly, about, Mikey. I hardly, I hardly think like, that Homer will fit into a fucking Iron Man suit, to be honest. Maybe they will. That'd be comical. The big belly hanging out. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take you'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. moving back to Loki. See, see, when, see when he brings out that case and he's like, I already know what's going to happen. Do you think there's no possible way this Kang the Conqueror motherfucker in the castle has control of everybody's free will and what they're going to do. What Was that a parlor trick, like Loki said? Because I got the vibes that he was just trying to get one of them to kill him or take his offer, but he knew, based on them, none of them would take his offer, I thought. What do you think of that? Well, you know, the fact that he's like, oh, one of you can kill me, you know, but if he did want to die, why didn't he do it before? He met the Loki and Sylvie. He was trying to find the right people. Do you so think? Like, yeah, he says it himself. He was like, he's been searching for centuries to find the right person to take over, and now he's got two of the same person. So he did. He did explain it. Mm. I'm surprised I paid that much attention. <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> I know I said, didn't. <laughs> he said he's tired. He's tired and he's ready. But. I thought that was all bullshit, personally. I thought he was egging them on to kill each other, uh, egging them on for them, one of them to kill him and turning them against each other, which he did successfully. I thought it was pretty brutal for a Marvel thing. She just throws that desk out of the way. Wow. Super strength demigod there and just stabs him. It was pretty dark. It was pretty dark for an MCU thing. Anybody else think so? Just me? Just <laughs> it wasn't as dark as I wasn't as dark as the Falcon and the Soldier moment where John Walker lit, digging the shield into. Oh, um, true, true. Nothing's I, darker like, than that. In it was the MCU. nowhere near as that. <laughs> Nothing like is as one. dark as that. They, in they, MCU. Did, they, they did kind of cut it to the point where she was actually stabbed. I wish I got to see that. The knife going right into him. I never got to see it. Got that some pent up rage. That was an You got some pent up rage, David. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see that fucking go right into him. I'm fucking take that. Ruining my life. Cars go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, though, what did you think? Oh, David. Me and David had a little debate, Mikey. You watched the episode about the age of Mobius. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> well, this episode, I said it last week. I mean, the time works definitely on the TVA. He's not 50 years old. No. And in this episode, eons, him and Ravona Rensselaer have been friends for eons. And come on, am I the only one? Mobius wants to eggplant that. <coughs> come on, <laughs> come on. That'll probably happen sometime in the future. Oh, I don't. I think Ravona is probably going to end up being one of the wee assistants for Kang and helping him. Or in Miss Minutes. I think they two are going to be helping the and become the uh, antagonist. Yeah. You notice, Mikey, you brought my attention to something about Miss Minutes in one of the earlier podcasts about how she had a double clock numbers around her. She's split into 16 rather than 12. This was a normal clock. I don't know if you noticed that. Was that? Mm-hmm. I didn't I, notice that. I specifically looked at it because thinking of you saying about that, because I never picked up on that before. This episode, I looked, and I'm like, oh, she's just 12, 3, 6, 9, and the ones oh. in between. I'm going to go back and have a look for that, then. So either, either, right, there's a twist in that, or someone can't count and done the clock wrong <laughs> at the bloody beginning of the episode. <laughs> but it's going to leave us thinking anyway. The illustration <laughs> guys just realised that for the first six, four to five episodes, he's put a clock of 16. And he's like, you had one job, Steve. <laughs> one fucking job to do a fucking clock and you fucked it. Fuck off. <laughs> I know that. Or Mikey was like, I just came up with that theory on the spot. <laughs> no, no, I had to put it in Just made up my head. 
Turns it, turns it, I can't count. <laughs> I don't do drugs, but I, <laughs> I was on some trip that night. <laughs> Honestly, but will we move on to the ratings? Yes, please. David, go first, mate. I want to hear your words first. I don't know. I just looked at you. I saw your face. I knew you weren't ready, so I'm like, you. It's a, it's a really, really hard one because I know what they're doing. I know that they're, they're building up. They're, they're wanting that anticipation. They want people to be brought into the episode. But the, the thing just dragged on for me. And you know what? Once again, I, I scroll to the end of the credits, hoping for a wee ending credit thing, you know? And then it came up, um, Loki will be back season two or whatever. And I thought, oh, shit, I've missed it. So I went back to the very end and watched the whole fucking credits just to make sure. <laughs> I it's never a missed stamp them. on the file. It was a cool moment. Can I, I just a- add, Mikey, before David makes his rating, can I might add that he watched it at like 8 or 9 in the morning, which yeah. was which was crazy to me. Did you watch it again, David? No. He watched <laughs> why would it, I do that? <laughs> he watched it too early in the morning, I thought. Yeah. That, that's why it, oh. I don't think he found it as enjoyable, personally. He asked me, you watched Loki yet at like 10 a.m.? I'm like... No, I'm going to watch it the night like a normal person. Yeah, if you're not. I was near my chugging chariot at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting watching Loki. <laughs> chugging chariot, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm copyrighting that right now. <laughs> you don't mess with a man's family, Paul. <laughs> Um, do you know David, what? Right? I've, been to, I've been waiting to make family jokes for you on this podcast the whole time, and I've just no, no one's made any reference to family so that I could throw it in. And, and I thought, you know, it's going in there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about those memes. They were coming in hot for a good oh. week and a half now. Then they vanished. Every time David, I see one, it was straight in your wall. Sorry, carry on. Hi, right, David. David, go for it. Let's continue. Right. Go. Well, Last week, what did I give it again? I gave it a four, didn't I? A four, yeah. <sighs> going, not going by the whole season, right? Um, I would give it for just that episode, maybe a three. And that's me being really nice about it because it yet dragged on, but I know they were trying to like push it to make us wonder what is going to happen you know they left with the big cliffhanger and all that so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go for a, a solid three but i know they're gonna do a lot better Mikey? i'm the same but you know what i so wanted to give it a five or like we done with falcon Metal soldier when i was 10 and you had shields coming at me every which way it was like fruit ninja i was slicing them off but <laughs> 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 Sorry, um, but uh, again, yeah, I, I was struggling. I was struggling to make it a three, but for the good grace of how good the show was, it's going to be a three. Show as a whole, five. This episode, three. You're up, Paul. Well, well, this episode. It's funny you say a three. In my head since last night, three point five. It ended up wrong. Is that it? But I did not expect the cliffhanger. I was excited about the whole, right, this makes sense. This is connected to the future of the MCU with the whole break of the timeline, which means until this point, the multiverse didn't exist, and now it does. And with this show and using Loki and Tom Hiddleston's performance, bloody Owen Wilson's performance, every character in this show, like even Ravona, she was my least favorite, but... You know what I mean? She had her place, and I was impressed. I'm curious to where she's going and what she's doing because her mind sw- her mindset has switched now, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I could not be- when it ended. I was like, "Wait, what is that?" It? Then post credits, boom, stamp. I like the way they did it with the files and including it in the whole mid credit scene. I right, sorry, the kind of pre credits, the start of the credits, the intro. It usually has funky animations. How they added it to the end of that and boom stamp Loki will be back in season two. Did not expect that at all. I thought this was a one off. I don't think Falcon and Winter Soldier or One Division will have a season two, but this 
I'm excited about that. Tom Hilson's an actual class act. Amazing performance. Owen Wilson blew me away. Probably the best thing I've ever seen him in. Given all that, my rating's a 3.5. And overall for the show, it's a 10 out of fucking 10, baby. I agree. 100%. And we rate it a 5. I wasn't disappointed with this set. It did drag in the second act. Overall, though, when I think of the whole piece and the questions that had me thinking, the answers that answered me, and just how it took me by surprise, I absolutely loved it. Now that I'm thinking about it, if I if I was to actually go through my average rating of everything that I've went through, how many have I actually gave a 5 to? I think I only gave like a 5 to 2. So I can actually say that I could give Loki a 10 out of 10 for the whole thing. Yeah, it was great, but now that I'm thinking about it, if I, if I do it mathematically, I, I'm probably at an average of about, about maybe an 8 out of 10, to be honest with you. Your average rating, right, for the whole series, included, was round about four, right? That was your average rating per, you know, uh-huh. episode. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think you've got a leg to stand on to give it a 10. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I do, actually. I mean, Honestly, I, did love it. I did love it, but I just feel, maybe I'm agreeing, like, 10 out of 10, yeah, but then I'm thinking more into it, like, actually, I've, I've been kind of like fours and four and a halfs and maybe threes, so I think it'll have to be an eight for me. If I, if I stand by what I've said per episode. But do you really think it's worth it? Because even I've gave it some some low scores, but it's still an absolute 10. It was just one episode. Is, well, to be fair, I went... What episode was I last on for? So I'd, um, I'd went four on episode four. Mm-hmm. Um, five on episode five. Five on episode three. Um yeah, I don't. Maybe I'm. If, if we're looking your way, then I probably couldn't say that the whole series was a ten out of ten either. But I'd say personally, the series was a ten out of ten. And the last episode was just a letdown. But, but again, it set up the whole future of what we're going to do and see and hopefully talk about. You know, Paul. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, that's me. That, that that's all I got to say. Who, who's hoping for a a Thor variant? <laughs> Absolutely what love have you done, <laughs> Imagine Thor's like, God damn, when he sees Sylvie. <laughs> I warned you, you're alive again. <laughs> Honestly, from the whole last episode with classic Loki, President Loki, boastful Loki, Kid Loki, I'm curious to see what's happened to Kid Loki next. Now that they've messed up the timeline, that version of Kang's dead. Where's Kid Loki now? Is the void still in existence? Many, many questions. Many questions. Any final thoughts before we wrap this up? I've got a low battery flash from my camera and I'm anxious. What's next? What's next? What comes out first next? Multiverse of Madness or is it Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Spider-Man then Multiverse of Madness, isn't it? When, when's the, 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 the guy coming out? The, the one that's... Uh... <clears throat> In Japan or China? When's that that's, coming out? That's after Multiverse of Madness. Or is, when's Multiverse of Madness coming out then? Spider Man, and then after Spider Man's Multiverse of Madness, then I think it's Shang Chi, then I think it's Eternals, and I think it's who knows. We've got a long way. We do. We do. Well, who's that actress in Eternals again? She was uh, Tomb Raider. Um... Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. I can't wait to see Angelina Jolie. The Eternals cast looks amazing, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like Richard Madden, um, Kit Angelina Harrington. Jolie, Kit Harrington. I can't wait for the Eternals. Looks like yeah, I think that'll be a great cast. But, Paul, you ready? What a series. What a show. Six episodes of this podcast. Breaking it down with my two favourite people to talk about it with. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure, boys. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series. What did you think of the Loki final series? Leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Are you happy to see that there's a season two? And what's your predictions for season two? Anyway, follow us on Twitter at the Nerd Dimension 89. Follow us on Instagram at the Nerd Dimension 89. And anyway, it's been a pleasure. Catch you next time.